All right, guys, so, so here we are, another exciting week. I know you're pumped up. Another exciting week of the Hope Series. Right? We started 2022 with a series called the Hope Series. Um, we called it that because I'm not very imaginative or creative. But, but we did it because it stands in stark contrast to the message that the world has for the beginning of 2022. It's kind of opposite of the way that society is starting this year. Right. It, the last couple of years have been nothing but bad news. And the beginning of 2022 continues to be nothing but bad news. If you if you follow the media, right, we've got COVID-19 that's going crazy. We've got inflation. We've got shortages. You name it. Last night, I saw that Arkansas has 90,000 active Rona cases. 90,000, which is a lot, especially if you consider that the population is like, you know, three million plus. Right. I mean, approximately 3%, just a little less, right? But, but about 3% of the people have, have Rona. That's insane. And so if you look at things like that, if you, if you follow the news, if you're living life of the world, then you have no hope. Now, as Christians, of course, we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so we wanted to start by, by just laying this out there, this huge difference between the church, and the world. Because if you're of the world, if you're of the world, I and mean, again, we're, not, we're in the world, we're not of the world, but if you're of the world, you're probably overwhelmed with anxiety, fear, depression, anger, narcissism, despair, junk like that. But we, the church, are able to stand in the hope that Jesus offers. We need to stand in the hope that Jesus offers. Right? So that we don't go crazy. And so that we can be a witness. I, I didn't put it on the slides this week, but the last several weeks, you know, we've read, we've read the passage of Scripture that says, always be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. That, that is a tool. It is a tool. It will continue to be a tool that we, the church, have to reach the lost. When people say, you know what? I don't see a way out of this, but you still seem to be walking around with a smile on your face. What's the deal? That's an opportunity that we're going to have to build the gospel, we need to stand in the hope that Jesus offers. So, the last two weeks, the Lord reminded us that we can hope because God will finish the good work that he started in you. He'll finish our work of significance. He'll finish the work of our sanctification. He'll finish the work of our spiritual gifts. Now, in this life, we're going to have ups and downs, right? You know? Uh, whether it's the work that we're doing that, that is significant in building the kingdom or whether it's really, you know, our striving to, to beat uh, repetitive sin, we're going to have the ups and the downs. But, but cumulatively, right, over our lives, we're going to go up and down, up and down. But cumulatively, we're always going to end up higher because God is finishing that work in us. And when we're down, we have the hope that we'll come back up. We're going to come back up higher than where we were. And so that is a reason that we have to hope. In the end, we, we trust God for our salvations, but we also believe him to move us toward perfection, and that's hope. This week, guys, another reason to hope, and I love this one. The reason that we have to hope is that because God himself, the mighty one, the everlasting one, the champion of the universe, that God will fight for us. God will fight for you. To say that we all face battles is, is a serious understatement. Right? We have a very real enemy that very much wants to wage war against us. 1 Peter 5.8 says, be alert and, sober and of sober mind because the enemy, the devil, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. John 10.10 10 says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And thankfully, Jesus sets himself up as contrast to that, right? He says, but I've come to give you life and life to the full. But, but the, the first of that should slap us around a little bit. That there is an enemy that really wants nothing more than to destroy you. A roaring lion seeking who he may devour. And the enemy comes at us sometimes influencing other people or institutions to oppose us, right? sometimes in spiritual realms disturbing us, sometimes whispering lies in our own ears that bring the battle inside of our minds. But the truth is we all face battles. And by the way, 
there's a big difference between a storm and a battle. Now, in Christianese, right, if you've been around church long enough, you've heard, you've heard difficulties described in both ways. You've heard storms and you've heard battles. I'm saying God is going to fight your battle, and there's a, there's a big difference. Here's why. Right, in a storm, if you just stay put, it'll pass. Right? If you're in a storm, then the anchor holds. Right, you know the song, right? If you're if you're in a storm, if you can just hunker in a bunker, right? You know, hide in the basement, it'll pass and everything will be okay. And God is with you in the storms. He's gonna speak peace to your soul and he's gonna carry you through, but you're gonna make it through. And but a battle's different. See, a, a battle, you just you can't just hunker in the bunkers. In a battle, you gotta blast your way out. There comes a time when passivity will only produce slavery. There comes a time when you can only seek freedom and peace through superior firepower. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says, Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. Of Christ. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's hope this morning. Yeah, you're going to face storms, and yeah, you're going to face battles. When you're going to face storms, God's going to carry you through. He's, he's going to see it okay. When you face a battle, when you decide to fight, when you decide to, to take up arms against whatever's coming against you, right? Whether, whether it's in the physical realm, the spiritual realm, or internal, when you take up arms against those things, then I've got great news for you. God fights for you. God fights with you. And you will absolutely see a victory. And that is reason to hope. Our text this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter number 14. So this is the, this is the passage of Scripture that, that um, the children of Israel had just come out. They, they've just experienced the Passover and they're standing at the edge of the Red Sea, which is, is normally not a big deal, except the armies of Pharaoh are coming up behind them pretty quickly. And so on one side, you've got an ocean, or the Red Sea, right? On the, on the other side, you've got the most powerful army in the world, and they found themselves in a deal of a pickle. And they cried out to Moses, and then Moses cried out to God, and, and here was the answer. Moses answered the people, don't be afraid. Stand firm, and you'll see the deliverance. The Lord will bring today. The Egyptians that you see today, you'll never see again. And I believe this morning that, that you can put whatever in that. You may not be facing Egyptians, right? But you may be facing some other battle. And the enemy that you're facing today, you'll see no more again forever. The last part of the verse says, The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. The Lord will fight for you. And this is hope this morning. The Lord will fight your physical battles. We go through the, the different kinds of battles. We've got physical battles. We've got spiritual battles. We've got our internal battles. So first, the Lord will fight your physical battles. Now, when we say this, right, we always picture God uh, destroying armies. Right? And to be honest, and to be fair, he's got a history of doing this. He's got a history of doing some incredible things, right? Right after our text that we read this morning, you know, you know how Exodus goes, right? You know, the, they get the rod and then the, the splitting of the waters and they walk through and then all of a sudden God says, well, that's enough. And he, he covers over the most powerful army in the world with an ocean. Like, he did that. that, that that's a thing. Right? God fought that, that physical battle. In Joshua, you know, a couple of pages Forward, right, in Joshua, we read that God throws down hailstones on the Amorite army. Like, that's a thing. God is fighting. And in 2 Chronicles, we see God setting an, ambu an ambush against three nations coming to attack Judah, and, and their armies thrown into confusion. They start fighting each other and killing each other off. God fought that battle. He's destroying armies. These are physical battles. And, and to be fair, God isn't done yet, right? If you read the, the end, the book of the Revelation, right? Some crazy things happen, right? The whole world gathers to fight against Israel and against the armies of God. And, and, and Revelation 19 is super scary, and it's scary for me, but I'm on the winning team. I can't imagine what it would be like on the other side, right? So, so all these armies are getting ready to, to fight against God's people, and, and the heavens open, and here comes Jesus, and he kills them all with a sword out of his mouth. Craziness. Those are some physical battles. When we think about God fighting, we picture him overthrowing 
armies, and that's certainly one component to it. But, but the truth is, when we say that the Lord will fight our physical battles, that just means that the Lord will help us fight battles in the physical realm. Not necessarily against armies, but against things that we fight right here on the earth. Now, again, just in clarity, I'm not expecting, I'm not even asking God to, to bop people or other humans on the head when they're difficult toward me. Partially because I don't want him to bop me on the head <laughs> when I'm difficult toward someone else, right? So, so we're, not, we're not asking God to come against people, but we're asking him to help us resolve situations. And I believe that the Bible teaches that he'll, he'll do that for us. God will fight for us. A couple of specifics I wrote down, and you can fill in the blank because there's just, there's just so many different things, but, but one of the things that, that he'll help us fight, I think this is important in our society, is, is he'll, hi, he'll help us fight inaccurate, inaccurate social accusations. Guys, we live in a world of cancel culture and all kinds of stuff. I really thought, you know, like back in the day, back in my day, boy, I sound old, and but back in the day, like, if you made it through junior high and high school, you kind of got to leave some of the petty behind. And then they invented Twitter. And it's just kind of downhill from there, right? The way social media goes, and I pick on Twitter, but, but it's, you know, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Choose your poison, right? People are so petty. And sometimes they bring an accusation against God's people that will that will bring a little bit of social misery. And I believe that, honestly, I believe that God will defend us in that. How is he going to defend us? Well, he's going to make the truth come out. He's going to let us have peace as we go through it because our identity is hidden in him. I'm not saying, this is just one example of, of a battle that I believe God will fight for us. I believe that, that, that the people that are stirring up trouble, that, that are bringing these false accusations against us, I believe that they're going to be exposed. Why? Again, because the truth will always come out. I believe God will fight for us with things like that. I believe God will fight for us in toxic relationships. Right? Again, I'm not expecting God to bop any person on the head, but, but, but I do believe that, that if we have friends that are dragging us down the wrong path, a path of death, that... that, that you love them, they're fun to be with, but you know that that's just destroying you. God's not going to beat them up, right? Because he loves them, he wants to save them. But I do believe that he's going to fight on your behalf to drive a wedge in that relationship. Partially because, you know what, the closer you get to God, the hotter you get and the colder they are, suddenly there's a friction and it just doesn't seem to work out anymore. And you start losing the appetite for them, and they start losing the appetite for you. Partially because of that. Some other times, and I've seen this happen, right? You, you, you pray, you say, you know, God, I see this, this relationship, this friendship, this whatever is dragging this person away. Would, would, you, would you do something like that? Sometimes God allows some, some circumstances to, to whatever, and they start losing influence over that person. Again, it's not, it's not for their destruction. Right? It's, it's for salvation and, and prosperity. But, but I've seen God fight those battles. Even for family members, right? That, that, and that can be a tough one, right? I'm lucky because I, I have a great family. I've got a great in-laws. Like, like, for me, life is good. But that's not the case for everybody. Sometimes the people that are closest to you say the worst things. But I believe that God will fight for you, right? Again, just, just removing influence. Maybe even changing the way that they speak. Because, you know what, one of the ways that God fights for you with, with people is that the Holy Spirit, even if, even if they don't want to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, sometimes they're sensitive. <laughs> sometimes the Holy Ghost will slap them around enough to think, you know what, maybe I don't need to talk to them like that anymore. At the very least, I know that God can fight for you by changing the way you hear things. Remembering the perspective. I mean, they may say horrible things, but... There's a difference between hearing and listening, and sometimes the Holy Spirit in you fights by just not allowing you to listen because there's something greater inside of you. There's, there's a lot, again, we're just battles in the physical realm. Sometimes, I even like, like health things, sometimes God will fight physical battles that include some, some health stuff. Yeah, absolutely, God can heal you, but God can also equip you to fight. 
my father-in-law has has advanced cancer and God hasn't healed him. But you know what he has done? He's equipped him to fight, to continue to live, to continue to be significant. And th- there's a there's a hundred other examples that we could talk about about how God will help us fight and win our physical battles. You know, systemic poverty or, or cultural oppression or closed doors or whatever else. If, if it is in the physical realm, if, then it's a physical battle, and God will fight that for you. So hope springs from the fact that God is on your side. He'll fight and win. Secondly, God will fight spiritual battles. And to be honest, right? to be honest, a lot of our physical battles have spiritual components. Now, I don't believe that there's a demon behind every rock. I don't. But I do know that we humans are spiritual beings wrapped in flesh. So if your physical battle involves another person, and most do, right, then there is absolutely a spiritual component. On top of that, I do believe in angels. Everybody believes in angels. They're great, right? Warm and fuzzy. You put them on a Christmas card. Life is good. Then I also believe in demons. Angels are ministering spirits sent to aid those who will inherit eternal life, and that's great. Demons are the opposite, right? They come to carry out the mission of Satan, which is, of course, to steal, to kill, and to destroy, and junk like that. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Here's a couple of spiritual battles that God will help you fight and win. Generational addictions. Now, I know that not all addictions are spiritual. There's a lot of components, and I'm not a psychologist or I'm not a doctor in any way, but, but I, I know that there, there's physical, there's emotional, there, there's all kinds of things, but there's also a spiritual component, especially when we start talking about generational addictions. And these are things, this is not a storm. It doesn't just go away. You can't wait it out. This is a battle. You've got to fight your way out. You've got to overcome. I saw a shirt, and, and this is just, this is true, but I saw a shirt that says, you know, alcohol ran into my family until it ran into me, right? And that, and that I love that thought, because there is, there's this generational addiction, there's this generational junk that the enemy would try to propagate from, from parents, the kids, and on and on and on and on until somebody says, you know what, no more. And you take up arms and you fight against it, and the Lord fights for you and the lord will defeat that spirits of lust greed anger rebellion again guys a lot of those are sins of the flesh and let's not get too kooky about it right because the truth of the matter is if if the flesh likes it then a lot of those things can just be uh, um, you know of the flesh but there's also a spiritual component and there's spirits that can make you slaves to those things so you can't take them lightly you got to fight you got to cast them down you got to cast them out you got a clean house you got to close doors Right? You've got to fight, but not in your strength. You've got to fight under the banner of the I Am. As a matter of fact, the, ba- the Bible gives us specific instructions when we're talking about dealing with spiritual things to don't try to go it on your own. It's not you that's rebuking. It's the Lord is rebuking these things. Right? So you're fighting under the banner of the I Am. But yeah, all kinds of spiritual stuff out there. You know, sometimes... Uh, Spiritual battles can even keep you from from hearing the voice of God and experiencing some of the power of his presence. It's like a story in in Daniel, you know, when when Daniel's praying and then he finally gets the answer after a long time. He's like, the angel shows up. He says, hey, man, sorry, dude. I was delayed because this demon kept wrestling me and I had to, you know. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes when you're going through a a dry place spiritually, then it's a spiritual battle that you've got to overcome. And the hope today is the Lord will fight for you. If you're dealing with generational junk, if you're dealing with with sin stuff that is beyond flesh, like it's it's a spiritual, and, and those things usually, at least in our society, manifest as, as lust or hatred or rebellion. Those are all very, very strong. Spirits of witchcraft, all that junk. 
Guys, I'm telling you, the Lord will fight for you. And the Bible says that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. And the Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And it says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So I'm telling you today that there is hope that the Lord will fight spiritual battles for you. Last but not least, the Lord will will fight your internal battles. The physical, the spiritual, and the internal. You can call it emotional or whatever. This one's the tough one. This one's the tough one. Maybe the most difficult. Because when we finally meet the enemy, we realize it's us. Sometimes the things that rob us the most belong to us. Sometimes it's our own, ima- our own imagination. Because in our imagination, without influence of demons or anything ooh, spooky, just in our own imagination, that's where fear and anxiety begin to multiply. And that's where we got to fight and win. Sometimes it's our emotions, and in our emotions, we let sorrow stew into depression. Sometimes in our emotions, we let anger beget hatred. And we go from an emotion to a sin, and it just, it just happens, and it begins to eat at us and capture us. Maybe it, it's our mind's eye, because in our mind's eye, we look in the mirror, and we see that we're not enough, and that we don't have enough. In our mind's eye, our mind's eyes play trick on, tricks on us, by the way. Right? It's like a funhouse mirror. Right? It distorts us, and it tends to over-exaggerate our negative qualities. Right? So sometimes the battle that we face, our, our emotional, our internal battle, is nothing but our own imaginations, our own mind's eye looking at us and saying, well, I can't get out of this. I don't deserve this. I'm not enough. Yeah, sometimes the battle is in us, but don't worry about that because, you know, God can win that one too. When his peace floods us, when his love overshadows us, when God speaks peace be still. And all this happens when we take up our arms and we then surrender to him and he fights for us and he shows us truth and he gives us wisdom and he wins. God will fight for you. This is hope. If you're facing a battle this morning and it's in the physical realm, whether, you know, no matter what, it, if it's in the physical realm, if you're facing a battle, God can fight that for you. God will win that for you. If it's in the spiritual realm, you better believe you got some, some big guns on your side. It's time to pull the trigger. If it's inside of you, it's an emotional, it's, it's God can fight that. God will win that. That's hope. So, how's he going to fight? Okay, super quick. Going to cruise through these. How's he going to fight? And this is true whether it's physical, emotional, spiritual, no matter what the arena is, here are some things that God will do to fight for you, and this is hope. First, he may send his armies to fight for you. I love this one. This is my favorite because, in general, I'm a lazy person. I'd rather someone else do the heavy lifting. Sometimes God does the heavy lifting. We, we bring the situation before God, and God sends his army to, to fight for us, right? It's like in 2 Kings when God strikes the whole army with blindness, right? God can sometimes do those things. He fights for us, and it takes, he takes care of it. More often than not, it's, it's the second. Sometimes he fights with us. And this, that, that's also nice. You know, the story about the hailstones being thrown down, well, you know what? So God did that with Joshua, but, but that's not the only way they won the battle. Joshua still sent the army. They were still fighting, hand-to-hand combat, and then God sends assistance. Sometimes if you're facing a battle, again, you know, whether it's physical, spiritual, or internal, then you've got to engage, and God will fight alongside you. Again, I would rather bring my relationship needs to God and have him just solve them. I would rather bring my financial needs and just just have God solve them. But sometimes, as a matter of fact, maybe most of the time, he fights with us and not just for us. The bad news is we've got to expend some energy. The great news is you always win. Always win. 
God has never lost a battle, not once, and he won't ever, never, ever, ever. Sometimes he'll just allow us to fight. Sometimes he fights for us. Sometimes he fights with us. Sometimes he just allows us to fight. Sometimes he does miracle signs and wonders, not necessarily to win the battle, but to allow us to fight because he knows we're going to win. And I'm thinking about like when he made the sun stand still so that Israel could beat up on the enemies. He did an incredible thing that day. Would it have been maybe easier if he just like opened up the earth and had him swallow the opposing army? Sure. But instead, he made the sun stand still to allow his people to continue to fight. Guys, some of us have been struggling for a long time against an enemy on a physical realm, a spiritual realm, an emotional realm. You've been struggling in a situation for a long time. Maybe God's going to fight for you. Maybe he's going to fight with you. Maybe he's just going to keep the sun up a little bit longer to let you finish what God has already strengthened you to finish. Just a little bit longer and you win the battle. He strengthens us to fight. Sometimes he gives us supernatural abilities, and I'm, I'm, looking at, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking at Samson here, right? Or David. David's maybe a better example. Samson like, ended up knocking over a couple of pillars and you know, didn't go well for him. But David was just this little kid fighting Goliath, right? You think David did that by himself? No, no, no. It was the Spirit of the Lord that came on him. It was the Spirit of the Lord that gave him strength to sling that stone it was the Spirit of the Lord that directed it right at the, at the exact spot. God will strengthen us to fight. And I love that. You know, man, you guys probably know what I'm talking about. But sometimes when you bring something to the Lord, and you're in, you're in the altars, or you've got people surrounding you and praying for you, or maybe you're, just, you're at home in your prayer closet, whatever, but, but man, you just feel the fire of God inside of you. And you get up, nothing's changed at the moment, but man, you just feel like you could just take on hell with a water pistol and you're ready to do it. You're gritting your teeth and you're like, Ugh. it's like the Hulk, you know, spiritually. And man, I love that. God will strengthen you to fight. And then you get up and you go about your day and you keep beating back the enemy and you win and you fight for what's important because God fights for you. God fights with you. God strengthens you to fight. The other way that he could do it, and opposite of this, is sometimes he weakens you to fight. I'm looking at you, Gideon. This one's not as fun. Sometimes when we're facing a battle, sometimes God allows things to get worse before they get better. Sometimes he says, you know what? got thousands of troops well you know what if you go and you win this by yourself then you can take credit but but it's not you it's me and so I'm going to make sure you get down to 300 and then we'll go fight the story of Gideon if you go and read it but a story that happens in our lives a lot of times too we bring something to God and 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 God says you know what you're still trying to do this by yourself you're still trying to defeat that Spirit, you're still trying to, to, to mend this relationship, and you're trying it by yourself. Stop that. And sometimes he even allows situations to get a little bit more out of control so that we finally come to him and say, God, I've got nothing left. Will you do something? And then he comes in and does a miracle. So we know that it's not our strength, but it's his. The Lord fights for us. So, how can we live in this hope? Last but not least, how can we live in this hope? Just a couple of quick words of wisdom as we get ready to, to head out of here. First, accept your position as a child of God. This changes the whole thing. And, and this, this is just, this is our perception, right? Because realizing it doesn't make it true or false. It is what it is. You are a child of God. Right? That's who you are. That's your identity. You're a child of God. You hear the voice of God. You speak the word of God. I hope you look yourself in the mirror every morning and you say those things. I'm a child of God. I hear the voice of God. I speak the word of God. That's going to change the way you live life. Accepting your position as a child of God 
makes you realize. Again, it's just a perspective thing. It's true. But, it, but when you realize it, it changes your perspective. And you say, well, you know what? If I serve a God that holds the universe in his hands, then nothing's going to beat me. It allows you to live in hope. So that's the first and foremost thing. Secondly, you, you got to give it to God in prayer. Now, these are just some, some practical steps, right? So if you're facing any battle today, I hope you're engaging in it, right? Because you got to blast your way out sometimes. But I hope you do that after you give it to God in prayer. And then leave your worry there. And that's tough. A lot of times, and I'm guilty of this just like everybody else, and so I know you're all guilty or I wouldn't be. But you, you bring it to God and you say, God, take this from me. And then you get up and you try to solve it by yourself, right? Because, because we're industrious people and we want to do those things, right? right? That, that's human nature. What we've got to figure out is how to give it to God. And then the third thing is be obedient. That starts with being able to listen to what he's got to say. That, that continues by saying, God, I've given it to you and I'm not picking it up when I walk out of here. It's really yours. And you can fight for me. Sometimes the commandment is, is to take up arms. Sometimes the commandment is to be still. And last but not least, you've got to trust God's word. Guys, I gave you a lot of scriptures today. Some of them I had on there. Some of them I just referenced. But I'm telling you, if you just go home and say, you know, like, Google, what does the Bible say about battles? Right? It's going to come up with all kinds of stuff. You know, look at, look at BibleGateway.com. Usually if you Google something about what does the Bible say, uh, it'll be um, like uh, Bible.info will come up or Open Bible will come up. Man, I'm telling you, so many scriptures, go and do it yourself. And then please believe it. This is hope. Now, whatever you're facing, again, physical, spiritual, emotional, God is fighting for you. God is fighting for you. 